Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be back here. I was here early in the morning, and uh, this is our uh, uh, second uh, se uh, session with you. Great to be here with you again. So today, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the autonomous database. As Oracle database development team, we have three key objectives. Number one, lead in database software innovation. We are by far the best database for all workloads, and we continue to innovate there. I highlighted a few of those innovations in the morning session today. Number two objective for us is lead in database infrastructure innovation. Exadata is the best database platform both on-prem and in cloud. Exadata X8M, our latest release of Exadata, is an amazing improvement over its predecessor. So innovation continues there as well. Number three, we want to also lead in database cloud innovation. This is where the autonomous database comes in and is the main topic of my session today. Autonomous database is a revolution in data management for our customers. It transforms the work of our customers from building and maintaining databases to just using an autonomous service on modern cloud. Autonomous database didn't get built in a few years. For over 20 years, we've been automating different parts of the Oracle database. In 9i, for example, we automated undo management. In 19c, we automated index creation. So you can now let the Oracle database decide when to create indexes or drop them. We have also done the same with Exadata. For example, Exadata automatically manages the storage hierarchy. It has spinning disk, it has flash, the new version, X8M, now has persistent memory, and it also has DRAM. Exadata automatically manages which tier to store what part of the data. Customer doesn't have to say what goes where. Oracle Cloud allows us to complete the journey to the autonomous database. Autonomous database is the combination of years of automation in the Oracle database, plus years of automation in Exadata, plus automation of data center operations. Automated data center operations include provisioning, patching, upgrading, online backups, monitoring, scaling, diagnosing issues, tuning, etc. It also includes automatically handling uh, failures and errors. Because we're a public company, I'm not allowed to share any metrics that can be used uh, to show the size of this business, but I can definitely quote our founder, Larry Elson, from our last earnings call, where he said, autonomous database revenues grew 200% and is on, is on its way to being the most successful new product introduction in our company's history. And we've launched some very successful products. I imagine almost every customer here today has Exadata, for example. Let's look at the uh, three uh, key breakthroughs that provide significant benefits to customers. Let's start with the autonomous area. The whole life cycle of data management is automated. Provisioning new instances, backups, all of the patching, upgrades, etc. The whole life cycle of data management is fully automated. High availability is automated. Every tenant's database is triple mirrored. Every tenant is running on real application clusters, rack, uh, to deal with compute node failures. Backups are fully automated. Every tenant can do a point in time recovery to any time in the past 60 days. All patching is automated and all patching is applied with zero database downtime. Security is automated. It's always up to date on security patches. This, by the way, is the largest security risk on-prem. Most security hacks take place because some security patch was not applied yet. Everything is automatically encrypted. The entire database, backups, network connections. You cannot choose to be unsecure with the autonomous database. With Autonomous Database, we also give you Oracle DataSafe for free. DataSafe is a unified database security control center. It allows you to assess the security risk 
a security and risk profile of your databases. It's also a place where you can store and analyze your audit records. So all of that was about autonomous lifecycle operations. Let's now look at the true elasticity that you get with the autonomous database. When you first provision the autonomous database, you say how many CPUs and how much storage should be provisioned. It's not constrained by any fixed ratios or t-shirt sizes like our competition. If you want 17 CPUs and 2 terabytes, that's exactly what you provision and pay for. You can grow or shrink instantly and 100% online. You can do this manually or through APIs, but even more importantly, through autoscale. Autoscale is so unique in the industry. It is so customer-centric that you can call it auto-discount instead of autoscale. You enable autoscale by doing nothing. It's a checkbox in the provisioning screen that you uncheck if you don't want it. It allows the autonomous database to scale up the CPUs and I.O. throughput by 3x if your workload needs it and only charge you for that additional usage during the minutes it was used. I'd like to show you autoscale in action because it's very important to understand the cost benefit of this. On the left, ADW1 is provisioned with four CPUs and no autoscaling. On the right is ADW2 and that's provisioned with four CPUs and autoscaling. Let's look at our control plane where you can view different uh, database usage metrics. Remember, left is the database with no autoscale. We just started running eight queries on both ADW1 and ADW2. All eight are running on both sides because each database is entitled to four CPUs, two threads each, giving you a total of eight. So far, so good you can see that uh, both sides show, uh, one side, uh, the left side shows 100% utilization, and the autoscale side shows only 33% utilization. So it has more capacity if needed. Now let's increase the workload. We have now 24 queries running on both sides. On the left, only eight of the 24 are actively running, 16 are waiting to be scheduled. On the right, all 24 are actively running. Now, both sides show 100% utilization. The database with autoscale is processing three times more workload. So the key thing to take away from all these graphs is you're only paying for what you're using. You're paying for 24 CPUs for the minutes you use 24. Other times, you just pay for eight. No one has anything like this. Finally, let's uh, look at the cloud operations. My team runs cloud operations for the autonomous database, and I'd like to share some, some of those metrics with you. Autonomous database continuously monitors the entire cloud database environment, automatically filing service requests for any detected issues. Today, 88% of all issues are automatically by, uh, filed by software. Only 12% of issues are filed by, by our customers. And most of those customer SRs are actually questions about something, not truly a product issue. We are able to close autonomous uh, database service requests four times faster than on-prem customer support. Why? because every diagnostic information that's needed to identify the issue is automatically captured. We patch the database automatically, once every 12 days or so on average. The patch is done in an online manner. I said we monitor the system automatically. As of today, we monitor over 8,000 metrics and have alarms for over 1,500 events. This list is growing every day as we develop new ones. And this isn't just database monitoring. It is monitoring the entire ecosystem of the service, our exadatas, 
our load balancer, our, our uh, connection managers, our tools like Apex, uh, OML, SQL Dev Web, etc. We monitor everything that makes up the service. SRs, service requests, are filed automatically for each deviation. Cloud Ops takes immediate action and resolves the issue. We root cause each issue and take corrective action so that it never repeats. There's zero customer involvement in any of this. Let's now look at what happens when a service request or an SR turns into a real database software bug. We obviously haven't eliminated all software bugs. On-prem, for example, it takes a while for the bug to be filed and logs to be generated. Then development start, uh, starts fixing the bug and may require further diagnostics. Once the bug fix is completed and tested, a backport is created and tested as well. The backport is then released to the customer and we can measure the median time until this point. Once the customer has the backport, we don't really know how long it takes uh, for them to apply it. But up to that point, the median time is about 45 days. For the autonomous database, bug creation and log gathering is instant. Development can fix those bugs faster because all diagnostics uh, they need are already gathered. Once the fix is available, it becomes part of our continuous integration pipeline and the database gets patched automatically. No customer action is required for the patch. The whole process is four times faster than on-prem. And on our side, we're, I'm actually including the actual patch time uh, on that, uh, on, on the, of the system, not just uh, the bug fix uh, being made available. So seven out of every uh, eight issues, or like I said, about 88% of all the issues are, are caught and, and uh, fixed automatically. For those of you who are running on-prem Oracle databases, just imagine 88% of the problems that you encounter will just be gone. They won't, there'll be none issues at all. You will not even know that such a problem happened. A year ago, we were not even half this number. Our goal is to get to 100% coverage, of course. I mentioned that we patch automatically on average uh, about every 12 days. On-prem, the average is about every 90 days. The benefit that you get uh, from that is issues are resolved faster. You don't wait 90 days for security patches. Patching costs you, the customer, nothing. You get new functionality faster as well. Over 25 new features were delivered in Autonomous Database in 2019. Let's talk about upgrades. We're about to offer 19C in Autonomous Database. In a couple of weeks, all newly provisioned databases will be 19C by default. You will still be able to choose 18C manually for at least the next six months. During this window, you can upgrade your existing 18C autonomous databases to 19C anytime you want. At the end of this period, of this six months, all remaining 18C databases will be upgraded to 19C automatically. So if you want a scheduled upgrade, we give you six months in which to do so. Let's look at the upgrade process in detail. The whole process is fully automated. It uses something called SQL Plan Management, a great feature of the Oracle database. The way it works is it tracks and stores all query execution plans in the pre-upgrade database. We then upgrade. We detect when a query plan changes from a previously executed plan. We ensure that the new plan is used only if it's proven to be faster than the old one. Okay, so we already covered that 88% of the service requests are automatically created and the median fixed time for an autonomous database service request is about four times faster than on-prem. Why is everything so much better? <clears throat> the key is automation. We automated monitoring, issue prediction and detection, bug filing, diagnostics collection, patching, and continuous integration. 
all this automation allows my cloud ops team to run 50 times more databases today than 18 months ago with no increase in team size. So 50 times more databases, same team size. As you've seen, autonomous database is architected for the cloud, but it's not just any database that you get with this autonomous service. It's the industry-leading Oracle database with all its capabilities. It's not just us who say so either. The leading industry analyst firm, Gartner, ranks Oracle as number one vendor in both execution and vision in its magic quadrant for analytics databases. The report says that Oracle received the highest score for product capabilities from its reference customers. So that's about the analytics databases. What about the transactional databases? Gartner publishes reports for transactional databases too. They call it operational DBMS. In the latest critical capabilities report that they just published, they have a total of four use cases in which they compare different products. Okay? On the left is event processing data in motion use case. That's one of their four use cases. Oracle is the best database for that use case of operational database. On the right is augmented transactions use case. I believe that's the ability to do analytics in the operational database. Oracle is the best database for that use case as well. Here are the next two use cases. On the left is traditional transactions use case. Oracle has always been the best in that and continues to be, so no surprise. Finally, on the right is distributed variable data use case. And guess what? Oracle is the best database for that use case too. A total of four different use cases exist for operational databases, according to Gartner and Oracle scores the highest in all four of them. So this was the industry analyst views. What about customers? We have thousands of customers who are using autonomous database and, and are extremely happy to see the benefits for themselves. They are giving great testimonials. We have customers who say they increase their performance by 12x, by 40x. Customers who reduce their labor costs by 2x while increasing the output by 2x. Customers who are able to quantify the additional value that they're getting uh, from their existing data. Millions of dollars worth. You can find out more details about these customers and others on oracle.com. And finally, if you haven't already, please try the autonomous database for yourself. You get a 30-day trial with free credits. That's with enough free credits to experience the autonomous database on about eight CPUs. You also get two smaller but always free autonomous databases, free forever. You will see all the benefits I talked about today for yourself. Thank you for your attention.